you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the honour to stand on your word and to proclaim your mighty love to all the people. I'd just like to start with um, Psalm 108, verses 3 to 5. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is higher than the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. And we just decree that over Australia the glory of God shall fall. We believe this. We believe this for our politicians. We believe this for our education system. We believe this for our health system. We believe this for our families. We believe this for our spouses, whether we're divorced or not. We believe this for our children and our children's children, that the glory of the Lord would fall upon this nation. We claim that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So um, my talk today is a sequel to the first one I gave. The first one was about the power of the word, and this one is act on the word. But I'd like to go back a few steps um, to a dream I had, um, I think it was in the beginning of the year, I can't even find it in my journal. Um, So the Lord gave me this dream of, um, there was a big, red ray coming from heaven and each household this red ray God the Father was beaming into every household in Australia I don't know if it's world but I knew it was Canberra and the red ray was in every living room and there was a very large um, like crest or coat of arms in each household And each household had symbols and signs that were the people's gifts and that was the identity of that house. And I believe the Lord wants us to go deeper in our identity in Him. So I'm just reminding you of this because this is unique to you and this is your personal identity in God. I know mine has a sword because the Lord has given me the sword of the Spirit which is the word of the Gospel. So mine also has a Bible because I know He wants me to proclaim His word. And I know there's a dove on mine. But I'm just prompting you and those who will watch this on YouTube, in prayer search the Lord God and ask Him, what's on my crest? what belongs to my family. Because once you know who you are in Christ, you can step out in Christ, in the Word, and act on it. So um, I'm just going to read a few scriptures. Ephesians 1, 4 to 5. We are created in Christ, in his image and likeness, Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. So we have been brought with a price, the blood of Christ. You are children of God. And he has freely given this, freely without any strings attached. And it says, freely the grace is given. Christ was blameless, but he became sin for us. So hold firm in your identity in Christ. Luke 10 says, See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes 
and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. The power of the word is actually God. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. God is telling us nothing will hurt us. So this is the first part of my talk. I, I, I would like people to understand who they are in Christ so that you know your authority. Your authority to actually, it said, over the enemy, the devil. Oh, and he's real. And he's trying to bring you down. He wants to take you out. But you have authority by the blood of the Lamb and by the word that is given to us. Psalm 119, I treasure your word in my heart. My heart stands in awe of your words. The word is God. And it's readily available. Do you open your Bible? Do you read your Bible every day? So now I'm coming to that the power of the word and who you are in Christ. Now I'm coming to acting on the word. So a lot of things we come to the Lord is with sickness. If you get sick, what do you do? You go to the doctor. And then the doctor says, oh, you've got this terrible disease and you've only got this long to live. And you say, what can I take? Take this tablet. So you take the tablet. And most people live in what the doctor said. The doctor's not God, but he helps us. Um, if, if you live in the word of man, you're not living in your true identity. You need to get the word within you and act on it. This is one example that I've experienced. Um, I think it was in the 1990s. I was working in a nursing home and I was pushing myself um, and then I did four days on and then they rang me up and said, oh, would you like to do a second? The lady, one of the nurses who's there, would you like to do a second shift? And I said, sure, because I never said no because it was people that laid in their beds. I always felt guilty. And that day I had this really cranky lady and I was in the shower room showering her and I just could not breathe. I just, you know, the door was closed, the shower was hot, and she was yelling at me, you used the wrong soap, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, I passed out. And then they could, I, I actually, I didn't pass out straight away. I felt like I was going to pass out, and I went to the nurse's desk, and I passed out. And they said, this is what they told me later. They got me in a wheelchair, they brought me to the front, and they said, she really is sick, this one. So I was unconscious, waiting, they rang my parents, and my parents took me to the doctor, and the doctor said, you've got to get a brain scan. I said, okay, I've got a brain scan, because I came to, I came to when Dad was there, actually. And I said, okay, I'll get a brain scan. Got the brain scan, and they said that you've got this electronic thing in your brain and your eyes do with this with lights, and you're an epileptic. That's ridiculous, I'm 30 something, I'm not never let me. What are you talking about? My gut reaction was, this is not actually my sickness. And then they said, okay, go to the specialist. I went to the specialist. The specialist said, you have to take these tablets for the rest of your life. And I said, actually, I don't believe I'm an epileptic. I don't believe I have this disease. I am not going to believe it. And I said, I'm not going to take the tablets. And I said, Lord, actually, all my life I've never had any seizures. I've never had anything. I'm going to trust in you. And I put my whole trust in the Lord. And I never got any other sickness about that. It was once, and it was a once-off. And I knew I was run down. But I trusted in the Lord. And the Lord heard my prayer. The doctor told me something. But I'm not encouraging everyone to go against the doctor. That's not what I'm... I'm I'll, I'll share with you another time. Um, so when I was 18, I left home to become a missionary. I felt the Lord wanted me to be a missionary. And I joined Mother Teresa's sisters. And no one would ask to take me, that's why I went to Mother Teresa, that's really bad. Um, because I was 18 and I had no profession. 
And I started off in Melbourne, and then they sent me to the Philippines. And in the Philippines, every other person has tuberculosis. All the people that they care for has tuberculosis. I got tuberculosis. And it was a resistive strain. So I made my first profession of vows and they sent me back to Australia. By that time I was very sick. And the whole, I had a hole in my left lung the size of the palm of my hand. And then they said, you better, we, we better cut out half of your left lung to save the right lung because it's going into the right lung. And I was on anti-resistant drugs. This was an anti-resistive strain to tuberculosis. And they said the medicine's not working. And I had been sick for more than a year. I had it for two years. Anyway, long story short, they put me in an isolation ward for three months. And they used to give me this injection of capriomycin, but if there's a little air in an injection, you can actually go temporarily paralyzed. Now this day, the nurse let a little bit of air in and I was paralyzed. And I was at to the stage now, I actually was coughing blood. And they said, we need to get in contact with Mother Teresa because we're gonna to have to cut out half of her lung to save her. And she was the one in charge. And she said, do what you can to save her life if it's necessary. And that day that I got paralyzed, I said, this isn't the end of my life. My life isn't finished. I know God's got a mighty plan for me. And I know that there's many other things I need to do for him. My heart was, I always want the heart of Jesus. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. And the scripture that was constantly on my mind in that isolation world was, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. And with this paralyzed thing, and I'm not a person to ask ever for help, I pushed myself up on my bed and a partus is, uh, you say, five our Marys and five our fathers with your hands in a crucifix. I could barely do it, but I did it. And I said, Lord, save my life. I had gone under a CT scan that day, and they said, we're gonna take out this and this much. Oh no, actually, the next day I was going under the CT scan so they could see how, how much to take out. And he said to me, the specialist came in after the CT scan, I don't know what those sisters are doing, but tell them to keep on praying. We don't have to take out your lung. The lung, the, the hole we thought was the palm of your hand is minuscule right now. And from that day on that I prayed that, the medication started to work. I think after the three months I was out, it was six months after I was totally cured. I'm fine. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord because you ask, you see, and you find. And he answers. He answers. Be obedient to the things that he brings to us also in the Holy Spirit. Yield our life to him in total surrender. Acting by his commands and not by our circumstances or problems. Sometimes our problems are bigger than our God. When your eyes are fixed on Jesus, your problems become very small. And he becomes very big. But in today's society, our problems are the ones that thrive us into anxiety, into fear. And this is the enemy. <coughs> yes, once you live in fear and trembling, because you're never going to move, you'll be paralyzed. If I rain, he says, well, praise the name of the Lord, because he's bigger. He's mighty. And if you live in the scripture, you know, by his stripes, you have been healed. You're not going to get healed. He's actually already done it. All our sicknesses should be gone. Because by his stripes we are healed. We come here and we long to be healed. A natural fact, God's telling you, actually I've done it already. I've paid the price. It's done. He's not going to come back and do it again. He's resurrected. Some people live in facts. So the doctor told you all the facts. 
A fact is a fact, but it's not as powerful as the truth. The truth will set you free. The fact is like a shadow, but the truth is the light, because Jesus is the light. Turn on the light and the shadows will gone. The shadow is the fact. The light remains forever because God's light, he is the light. And this is what remains in heaven. Heaven has no sun, God is the light. There is no darkness in him. If anyone prays over you and says breathe, because you've got a lung problem, walk, or stretch out your hand, whatever your problem is, you're acting on that thing that they tell you to do, is your faith. My partis that I did was my act on the word I'm asking. It was my faith. It was Jesus within me that drew me to faith, that gave me grace, which gave me the blessing that healed me. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, we are to act on the word which the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Um, I'll just share with you this uh, one time that I was acting on the word, but it was a word from the Holy Spirit to me. So, it was one Friday, it was just recently. Um, and I heard the words, and I feel like the Lord was putting me to the test. I heard the words, receive my love. But it was from outside of my own head, and it was a woman's voice. But normally when I hear the word of the Lord, it's in a man's voice, and I said, that's a bit weird. So I said to myself, I have to test this if it's from God, because I don't want to go up and say a test testimony or a, a word for the congregation if it's not from the Lord. And then I said, Lord, I receive your love. Can you give me a sign that I should go up. And the Lord reminded me of a vision that I had, it was a few months before on a Friday, and I saw the head of Jesus and the crown of thorns had one drop of blood dropping. And the drop of blood when I received communion dropped on me and purified me. And then I saw a communion, a beautiful flower opening through the blood of Jesus. We've been redeemed through the blood of Jesus in the Eucharist. We get strength to carry on and to grow from glory to glory. And I realized that people in the congregation couldn't receive Jesus' love because they were in fear of their sin. We all are weak and we all have sinned, but we just repent and we say, have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy. And he's all bountifully merciful. He forgives everything we do. We are so unworthy. It's only through the blood of Christ that we gain this privilege and grace to walk with him. So then Father Beishu is up at adoration and he says, speak the word of God in your mouth. And so I said, oh, that's it. The Lord told me to go up. So I went up. But this was a word of the Lord in my head. Ear. So I went up and I was obedient. I said the word that there are people who are fearing, they only can see their problem or their sin. The Lord wants to heal you. He's healed you through the blood of the Lamb and He wants you to receive His love. He wants you all to receive His love. When I sat down, I was had my hands like this and the Lord poured oil on my hands. He blessed my obedience. He blessed my obedience with receiving his love that way for me. That must have been how I needed it that day. So when we actually step out and walk, we act out the word of God, the word of the Spirit, he blesses you. I just want to read this. This is the best um, one I like for this. Um, it's the Jesus cleanses the ten lepers. On the way to Jerusalem, 
On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten leopards approached him. So as he entered, they must have been hanging around waiting for him. Keeping their distance, they shouted, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So they're repentant. They're asking God's mercy. Then he saw them and said to them, Go show yourself to the priests. If I came to Jesus, I'd want him to pray over me. But he didn't pray over them. He said, Go. Act on it. Act on my word. Go show yourself to the priest. That was it. And as they went, they were made clean. So they acted on the word of Jesus and he healed them. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and praised God in a loud voice. Hallelujah, they all should have done it, but hallelujah for the one. And he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. So, Jesus sent these ten lepers away, and as they acted on his word, they were healed. You, you think about what you have within you that you want Jesus to heal. Think about it. when we come closer to Jesus in the Eucharist and we sit up the front, give him that, and come back next week and tell Father Basil. Go to the priest and tell him I've been healed. That's how it works. You step out, you have faith, and the Lord blesses you. And the Lord heals you. This is the glory of the Lord. Your faith is enough. Your faith is enough. You walk with doctors. I walked with doctors when I had tuberculosis. I took all the medicine. But my faith is the thing that cures. Jesus did the will of his Father. He said, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. How can we listen to all these wonderful preachers, all the priests that are here? We've got so many blessings. We kind of agree with our spiritual blessings that we have here and not act. Acting isn't a hard thing. Mine was kneeling up and doing this and asking God to heal me. Or stepping out if the Lord tells you a word. Or just going up the front when they call you out and you walk away and you're healed. It's so easy. But it's our faith that we need to grow. Remember, the size of a mustard seed, we can move the mountain. Proverbs 1.23 says, Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my spirit on you and make my words known to you. And Mark 11.23 So I tell you, whatever you ask for me in prayer, believe you have it. Believe you have received it and it will be yours. So if you're prompted by the Spirit to act on the Word of God. Take a piece of scripture. That's Matthew 11, 23. Believe you have received it already when you've asked it. Act on it and the Word will come true to you because the Word is God. So I just pray, Father God, through the blood of Jesus. That we would act on your mighty word, that we would devour your mighty word, and that we would desire and hunger each day to make this your daily food. That you would be consumed with eating the word of God. And then the will of the Father would be done in you because you would become like God knows I fall. You 
just say sorry. You just say, have mercy on me. And he's always with you. He sent us the Spirit, our Comforter, to guide and protect us. Just ask you, Father God, that your glory would fall in this place and that you think of one thing that you'd like to act on as we go into adoration and believe you have received it. Believe in the mighty name of Jesus.